Okay, so as I just said, this presentation or these uh, classes will be about image formation, image reconstruction, and also about um, transmissions coming for the art generation map. So the first and simplest way to make images is make planar images, which is meaningful with gamma cameras, not with PET cameras, because they measure all the uh, LORs at the same time anyway. But for a gamma camera, this matters. And it's a very popular investigation, in particular for uh, scanning whole body, uh, for making whole body scans of uh, the bone tracer distribution. And it's also useful in, with the gamma camera if uh, you need very high temporal resolution. And the reason is that it is impossible to rotate extremely quickly with a gamma camera <clears throat> for two reasons. First, if you rotate very quickly, you will have almost no photons in every view and your reconstructed image will be very poor. And second and most important, it is too dangerous to rotate the gamma camera very quickly. And the, the things are very heavy, very powerful, <coughs> and you don't want that thing to rotate around you uh, in, in just a few seconds. If you would do that, you would have to disguise it as a CT system. But in many cases, planar images are just fine, and this is just an example of a, a kidney investigation with a technetium labeled uh, tracer. And the tracer accumulates in the kidney, and normally, if the kidney functions well, like this, this blue one, then um, the tracer should be actively uh, eliminated uh, <coughs> and, and uh, transferred to the urine. And so here you see the dynamics. And in the beginning, just after tracer injection, the accumulation of the tracer in the kidney is very fast. So there are many one second frames here. And then after a while, uh, the, the dynamics get much slower and then they shift to longer images, uh, longer, longer scan times per image, for example, one minute images to have better images. And also because uh, the high temperature sampling is no longer needed. And so you see that for this patient, that other kidney is not functioning well. So the accumulation is a bit slower, but the, the elimination of the tracer from the kidney is very slow. And here you also see that in, in some cases, it can be very useful to have this lookup table, because if you adjust the lookup table, you, you really see different things here. Um, OK. So this is for planar imaging. There are other examples, but they're all uh, similar. More can be said about reconstruction because it's a bit more complicated. Um, so I'll first briefly review what uh, 2D projections are and what a sonogram is. Um, in, for example, in a good old PET system where there were septa, we acquired 2D tomography, so to speak, which is uh, data that can be organized as a set of parallel beam projections. And you see that here. So we, they're all measured at the same time in all directions, but we can organize them as a set of parallel beams. And then uh, we have three parameters, one along the x-axis, one along, well, one along the, what we call usually the z-axis, one radial, and then the angle. Um, in 3D PET, and these days, if you buy a PET system, it's always a three-dimensional PET system. There are no SEPTA anymore, and there are more LORs acquired. And so to demonstrate that, we have, of course, the same that we would have acquired if there were SEPTA. And that's, again, producing these two dimensions for every view, and then a third dimension for the rotation angle. And then in addition, we have a fourth dimension, which is the obliqueness. So Often this is parameterized by the ring difference being, uh, yeah, if, if this is ring one and this thing is acquired in ring three, then the ring difference is two. So it, it's not a degree of obliqueness. You could also use that. Line. So it's four dimensional, which makes sense. You need on a cylinder two coordinates to identify one uh, interaction point and two coordinates for the other one. Now here um, is a set of, of nine parallel beam projections. These are uh, non-oblique ones. These are straight ones. And uh, of course, in a PET scanner, you would typically acquire several hundreds of those, and then in addition, also the oblique ones. 
So why do we call it sinogram? Well, that's illustrated here. So suppose we, we have the field of view here and we put a little bit of activity in here. And now a gamma camera is slowly rotating around the patient. And each time we acquire some data, it's a parallel beam projection because we assume the gamma camera has a parallel beam collimator. So we acquire an image here and we put it aside. And then we acquire an image here, we put that one there too. And if we go on like that, we get this set of images. And you can easily show mathematically that this uh, the, the, the profile of the image in of the, the activity in the image is uh, a sinus, and that's why we call it sinogram. So this is the position on the detector and the or the distance of the projection line from the center, and the other coordinate is the projection angle. Now in real life, you will never acquire a thing like that, you will typically acquire a thing like that. So you scan a few seconds and then you get a few photons and then you scan some more, you get more photons. And if you scan longer and longer, you get more and more photons. And only if you scan forever, you get a nicely noise-free image like this. Okay, so this is more like a, a probability distribution than something that you can really measure. All right. <clears throat> Here you can again uh, yeah, see the, the definitions. So we have um, the, the two important coordinates or distance uh, of this projection line from the center. So that is this coordinate D and then the orientation of the LOS theta. That are the two coordinates that go here. And then you can easily show that a projection of the center of this uh, object follows a sign. Uh, yeah. And so in this case, these data are organized as projections over 180 degrees, which is also what you would always have in PET. A gamma camera can rotate further and acquire also difference at the other uh, projections at the other side of the patient. And they will be different because the effect of attenuation in both directions is different in spec. Therefore, it's meaning, meaningful to acquire over 360 degrees. So then you will have a sinogram that starts here, goes all the way up and then all the way back. So you will see a full period of that sign. Uh, and the first half will look a bit different from the second half because of the attenuation. This is for a pet. So for a pet, if we take these views and we take a single row in every view, uh, these are just nine, but we have many of them. And if we put them one below the other, we get this. So here at PET-Sinogram, so only over 180 degrees because we measure the whole line at once. So 360 doesn't mean too much. But we could easily synthesize a 360 degrees sinogram from it because this line should be the same as that line, except that it's mirrored. So we can mirror the whole sinogram and glue it below here, and then it will produce a nice 360 degrees of Okay, so if you have a set of parallel beam projections, then basically you have a three-dimensional block of data. And if you cut it in one way, then you get projections, then you get this. And if you cut it the other way, you get uh, the sinica. And so here you see the trace of the heart going down here. And if we look a bit further, then you see the heart here. And you see these uh, two um, low activity uh, profiles are from the arms because the photons are heavily attenuated by the arms. And in particular, if the photons have to go through one arm, through the whole body and through the other arm, then almost no, none of the photons survive. It. And that's what is happening here. So yeah. Okay, so after a while, if you have seen many of these sinograms, you can immediately see if, if this is a thorax or brain or abdominal sign. So now uh, a little bit of mathematical notation, which will help in explaining uh, filter pack projection. So for analytical reconstruction, so if we describe the whole thing mathematically, we need um, yeah, mathematics. And uh, the easiest is to use continuous uh, mathematics for that. So we assume that the object is a two-dimensional distribution, which is defined in any point. And we assume the same for the sinogram that which means that we have infinitely fine uh, detector pixels and that we have infinitely many projections. And then we can write that the sinogram, which is the projection of the data uh, for these two sinogram coordinates, equals this integral. And this integral basically says 
uh, yeah, go through your entire uh, object and use that pixel in the integral provided that uh, x cos theta plus y uh, sinus theta equals s. And that is by definition this red line. So we, every pixel is projected onto uh, the line through this vector theta. And if the distance equals s, then we need that value uh, added here to, to compute that projection. That is one way to write it. Another popular way to write it is like this. So you say um, in, in distribution lambda, move over distance s along vector theta, which is this. So we, we move until here. And then we run along the theta perpendicular. It means up and down the line from minus infinity to infinity. That's what this R is doing. And then another way to write it <coughs> is this, which is basically uh, inserting this in here. So, um, or, or writing this in with coordinates, basically. Okay, so the S goes here and, the, and here and the R again. And we indicate that. All right. So that's a projection. We will also need a back projection, and that looks very similar. So a back projection is produced, is an image which is produced from a given sinogram. So we use again sinogram P. I call the back projection B and not lambda because a back projection is not a reconstruction. So B is definitely different from lambda. So what is this back projection? It's the adjoint operator. And intuitively, it, it is the same operation as the projection, except that it works in the other direction. So for the projection, we run along this line and we accumulate all the activity along that line. For a back projection, we take what we have in this projection and we distribute it along that activity, which exactly the same um, weight that each voxel contributed here. So if, if this would be a weighted integral, we would use the exactly the same ways in the, weights in the back projection. So that means for a particular pixel, <coughs> We run over all the projections, and for all the projections, we pick the S that will produce, uh, that has been uh, influenced by that pixel during the projection. Okay. So we run over all the data, and for all the data, we compute um, where in S the projection of lambda is going, which is again the same expression that we had here. Okay, so each time we see an integral over theta where the, the uh, sinogram coordinate is computed like this, we have a back All right, so <clears throat> again for this back projection, so we want to back project a particular uh, sinogram. So we look at one pixel and at one particular angle, and for that pixel, we project this pixel. To that uh, perpendicular to that line here, uh, we get here, and then we run along the line. 